What is up my OCM2 beans? How are you all doing and welcome to From the Depths where we get to build flyers, boaties, submarines, space thingies, structures, tanks, whatever you want and also you know to do the whole main campaign. Anyway this game has been out for quite some time now. I think it's been out since 2015. Uh, recently has had an update, what, two days ago, which has had a number of changes um, to the game in the way the AI works, mostly the controls of the AI, as in, you know, to get the flyers flying and the ships shipping. And uh, the first things that happened when I loaded up was my flyer didn't want to fly, because I was working on this pretty much before the patch. This was supposed to be uh, uh, like the first starter vehicle that I was going to bring in, but then I got a little bit too carried away, and it is way, way, way too expensive to start the campaign with it. So this is, if you don't know, the designer mode for the game, where nothing much happens except you spawn enemy ships in, you create your own ship structures, um, vehicles, whatever you want. Whatever you want. So the first thing that happened was, my my little flyer here. It didn't want to fly, it didn't want to do anything. Um, and I checked out our propulsion and this whole thing is absolutely brand new to this patch, I think. It has been a while since I actually played as well. So uh, yeah, this happened and I was like, oh jeebus, what the hell is all this about? But it's not that hard to understand. I'm going to go in a little bit, sort of a little bit in, in detail with it soon. So the first things that you have to do is if you have your thrusters which are towards the back of your construct and is going to give you forward momentum, you need to set them on the pusher preset. Okay, so you have to go through all of your engines, every single one of them, and put them all on pusher preset. So that would give you the default, you know, setting. You obviously can mess around with these things. So right now it's giving us a plus one on the forwards. And this is our main, um, you know, method of, of um, propulsion. It's not our secondary, it's not our tetrary thing. It is our main method of, you know, movement. Uh, so that is obviously set to 1, so it's either 0, or it's either minus 1, 0, or 1. Minus 1 will probably send us in, in reverse, but, you know, it can't because these are facing forwards. Anyway, power scale is obviously on full. We want to use all the power that these can generate. So, you know, these these come on all on their own. When you push the pusher preset, they turn these on like that. So that was the first bit of beeswax that I had to do to get this thing actually, you know, moving. The other bits and pieces that I have found to be quite useful, which I'm going to go into a little bit more detail in a mo, is the actual AI PIDs. Not our general, which is somewhere near, over um, here, there, this one. This is our general one. This has also changed. Um, this, however, was pretty much set up um, before the patch happened, so it automatically chose the propulsion vertical setting. I have a fake set point of 200. This is for our altitude, so you enable the fake set point, and in this set, you know thing, I'm giving it the altitude, I believe. Well, that is how it was when I set it up before the patch. So we want an altitude of 200, but obviously, you know, you have your other settings in your cards, which I know it's a bit hard to, to see at the moment, but in here we have an AI mainframe. Obviously, we need an AI mainframe for every single construct that we make. With the AI mainframe, you need to have your card slots. Now, your card slots, you can have multiple card slots, and this time, with this patch, if you add in more routine cards that gives you access to add a number of behaviors so if I have seven routine cards we can add you know like seven of these so you know each tab if I 
select one from here then you know it's going to decrease like if I add this it's going to add to this this one routine so if I add in for example um, I don't know this is something I want to test out the projectile avoidance so if we add in that if we want to add in like the thrust the balance we would have to add another AI routine card so that's something else to point out so you know in order to add another AI routine card I would have to add another AI card slot which I don't have any space for right now so with this you obviously you know come in here and it's pretty much the same thing if you were playing this previously before this patch it's pretty much the same bits and pieces that you you had before just you know located a little bit differently and presented a little bit differently so we have also you know this is the same this is the same um thing that the the ai you know is the automatic the automatic flyer you know ai so it's split up into different sections now so you have your movement and you have you know your behavior movement um, any additional bits and pieces that you want to add I know there's thrust the, the the balancing for the thrusters previous to this patch that used to mess me up a little bit more than actually help then we have our PIDs which we're going to get into so you know the maneuvery stuff is pretty much the same this also gives you access to the PIDs that we shall be adding however I won't be adding anything more in terms of PIDs on this I'm just going to quickly show you guys um, and this if you used to play before is the exact same thing that we had except we have now our wonder distance which you know if it has a waypoint here it can fly like a hundred meters away and around it you know pretty much like that obviously correct me if I am wrong so over here we have access to our PIDs however I don't have a roll PID so we pretty much can't do anything here that's going to affect our um, flyer we do have a yaw and we do have a pitch I believe which I added in after the patch and pretty much I didn't even have to do anything to them it did smooth out the whole the stability it smoothed it out you see this wobbling right now it was it was doing that much more frequent without the uh, the yaw and the pitch so uh, in order to use the AI PIDs unlike the general PIDs you have to attach them to your mainframe so I just quickly pulled out some AI connectors and you know fed them on so once you put it down you then have to select what you want it to control so in this case I wanted it to control our yaw and by default anytime you put down a um, AI PID it's always going to be on your so you have to go in and you have to change that like I've done over here I went in and I changed it to pitch so now we have you know one controlling the your one controlling the pitch and this you can access which is really nice from the mainframe itself so right now I have the mainframe you know under my fingers and we go to the, the the PID section these are only for the AI uh, PIDs you won't have access to your general PIDs from um, from here so the general PIDs you still have to find them manually in your vehicle and then use Q to open up their, their window so over here you can adjust things as we had before um, it does they do give you a, a, a bit of a description um, if we go over here I think it was so you know this this gives you a description of you know what the general PIDs are going to be doing or what they're going to be affecting and if you put them on none and give them a constant or not you know it will affect them differently it does give you a brief explanation for that so you can also access the um, AI PIDs from here as well but in this case I didn't even have to, to do anything with them really it, it did smooth smooth out the the whole uh, 
you know, movement of the flyer itself. So that was the first thing that I had to do when I came into the game because my thingy, it didn't want so to fly. For our next bit of this upload, we're just going to try to create a very basic thruster craft. Okay. And like that, it's going to use all of the AIP IDs. Um, so we can have a look at them properly. Well, at least a little bit. So I'm going to quickly set up a thing. And remember to have our mirror mode. Because we're not noobs, we're pro and all that. And I should actually have this like that. Um, yeah, that's a good base. That's a good base for now. Okay, so uh, we obviously need method you know, of power to, to generate power. And we're going to be quick and cheap and dirty, well, expensive, <laughs> expensive and dirty and do one of, oops, one of these. And we're going to have obviously some batteries for our RTGs to charge. And then we need the engine, electric engine to send that power from our batteries into whatever propulsion we're going to be using. Um, might as well get one of these and get our little robot dude a chair to sit in. So that's our basic power. We now need a mainframe. Every ship or construct needs a mainframe and yes, card slots. Now with the card slots now, you probably you can add quite a number of these because it's going to help you out. Because the more you have, the more behavioral card slots you can attach. So like this, even though we have six, it's going to give us seven. Because for some reason it has um, one installed, I guess, on the on the mainframe, perhaps. I don't know. I don't know. But we have seven. So we can set those up and we can say we want it to broadside. Because this, the, for example, this thruster craft, my thruster craft, I want it to broadside. Yours it doesn't have to broadside, you know? The, that's an optional thing. So, But I want to put it in because I want to try it out because I, I haven't seen this previously um, in the in previous updates. And maneuver, 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 maneuver. I don't know. Yes, we're going to have the six axes because we're going to be traveling in all axes. And we're going to have to say, well, say nothing and just tick it, turn it on. Obviously, we have our options and so on and so forth inside here. Uh, which for now we're going to leave alone. Ad the additional stuff. Um, thruster balancing I'm not going to use because most of the times it just causes, causes me a headache. But I'm not saying that it's going to do the same in this upload, uh, in this update. Um... Particle for the triggers the E control axis when projectile is detected within 100 meters. Well, we can't do that yet. I'll try that out another time. But if you guys know, guys know how well this is working, please let me know in the box in the down there. Right. We obviously need our um, AI PIDs, but in order to connect them, we're going to chuck them on these because we have nowhere to place them. So our AI PIDs, uh, I think we need six. Five and six. So the first one is always going to be set at your. So we'll just go on to the second one straight away and give it pitch. And get rid of that and go on to our third one and say roll. And get rid of those. And strafe. Up and down. Strafe is also new to this patch. And we're going to say forwards and backwards. And with strafe, in order to make something strafe, you would have to probably, um, I'm assuming right now, I don't know, let's use iron thrusters because they can work underwater. And we'll probably be ending up in the water quite a lot. So with the strafe, I'm assuming you put a couple of these right on the side of your construct, go into their options, and you're going to say it's a pusher, not a turner. So with a pusher, it says, as presets for pushing up, down, left, right, forwards, and backwards, whilst the turner is going to give you a rotation. So you don't want it to rotate. You want it to push it left, or you want it to push it right. That's, you know, how strafe 
I assume would work. So we're not going to be using strafe uh, for now. That is something I'll look into another time. We obviously need a method to, to send us forward and perhaps slow us down and send us a little bit in reverse. We also need methods to roll left and right. I'm going to put these on the up and, the, and on the down. You might not need to have them on the up and the down on yours. You know, you might be able to get away with just having four on the down or four on the up um, to to set the, the roll, you know. So, but the more you have, the more stable it's going to keep it and um, a harder response time, a quicker response time to keeping it, you know, stable. So we got those four or eight. We're going to say, you know, we want obviously turn left and right. Again, you could probably get away with just using some on the back. It's obviously, it's not going to rotate it, you know, on the center point if you have just for, you know, a couple on the back or just a couple on the front. That's going to, you know, it will push, it will push its ass this way, for example. But if you have have a balance, that's for sure gonna going to turn it right on the, you know, on the center part there, I guess. So yeah, it's going to help on the turning pretty much. It's going to help on the turning. Um, so that is the turning. We need to keep ourselves in the air, so we can add. I don't know. Let's add one there. One there. Um, one in the middle. Can we put it in the middle-ish? Not really. Um, okay, so we'll just go off a little bit then. Put it there. Just try to keep these things. The more balanced that you build your construct, the easier it is. Um, it's going to be to sort. You know, keep it balanced. I guess. <laughs> You know, the easier it is, it's going to be to to just keep it working properly, really. Okay, so we have those. We also need a method to put our nose up and our nose down. Not that I want to have our nose to be going up or down, because I really want this construct to stay flat as it is, as you can see it like this. I want it to fly around flat. I don't want it to roll. I don't want its nose to go up. I don't want its nose to go down. So like I said, try to keep everything, you know, equal. Okay, so we have that. We have our turning, we have our thrusters. Oh yes, and just in case we do end up going over our um, altitude, we want a method to bring us down. So I'm going to add two there. Right, I guess that is those bits sorted out. We need to then double check. Um, let me just remove this thruster from my hand. We need to then double check and make sure these are, you know, sorted out. So right now it's saying it's your right. So I'm assuming that it's automatically detected that this is going to be used for turning. Um, if this was a strafe, let's just get a couple here this was going to be a strafe as you can see it's on your so we would have to come here and select pusher and it would put it on exactly strafe left that is awesome that is awesome definitely gonna look forward into trying some strafing things right so that is our turners let's just double check the ones on the front okay these are for our rolls and it has selected pitch so we want you on roll we want a couple of bread rolls. Uh, roll. This is for our pitch, which is already selected. Uh, I'm just going to make sure. Put this on roll. And that one on roll. And this, we can say it's a pusher. But now, oops, okay. And the ones on the back. Okay, so that is all of our rolls uh, sorted out. Our bread rolls. Um, our turning is done. This is already set on that. Very good. 
These, however, need to be sorted out as well. We are going to say these are pushes because this is going to be sending us up, down, as you can see here, as presets for pushing up, down, left, right, forward, and backwards. So we want to go obviously up with these. And it has already, it already knows that it's going to go on the up due to the orientation of the block. So we're going to just have these on push. Because right now they're on on pitch. So, you know, we obviously don't want that. Um, did I set these? Yes, I did. Okay. And obviously this is going on push and it's going to say down automatically. Very nice. And down. Right, so we have those basics sorted out. It, this, it does take us a little bit longer than probably before, or, well, actually not really, because even before we had to go through and set them. Actually, I think before it was a bit more tedious to do because you'd have to work out which which was your, which would be the left setting and the right setting, you know, to have it turn left or right. I used to get those conf confused, to be honest, mixed up. Okay, so a random cut there. Where the hell were we? Um, right, we set these guys up and we're just going to come in here. Maneuver, we have the maneuver done. We want to say our hover. So we want to tell our hover, we, what we want to tell it to hover at. And I'm going to say I want you to hover at, you know, 300 altitude, okay? So I'm going to enable we enable a fake set point. This is telling our, our, our PIDs to you know at you know take us up or take us back down to our Y level you know 300. So that is that. I mean you can obviously set it up to you know wherever you want, pretty much. Okay, so we said we want an altitude of 300. So I'm going to take our caps lock off and see what that's going to do. So as you can see, right away, we are nosedived. <laughs> we are pretty damn bad. Um, so I'm going to put caps lock back on again. Um, I believe it was, um, yeah, pitch. Keep on confusing pitch and your. So we want our pitch. We want our pitch to stay at zero. So like this, flat. So let's take our caps lock off once more and see how that is working out. Still pretty damn bad. Um, yeah, pitch the vehicle up and down. But it is trying to level itself out. So obviously at some point it probably went, you know, oversaturated over here. But it is keeping us pretty damn level. And we are currently going past up and down between 290 to 300 something. So what we could do with that to be a little bit more strict on the hover side of things is probably adjust our gain a little bit. Hopefully that's going to be okay if we did end up crashing you know, into the sea that it will sort itself out without going output is oversaturated and keep on wobbling around like an idiot. Um, sure. Nope. So our pitch again, we might be able to increase that and just put this up a fraction. And also this just up a little bit as well. Usually, usually have to put the the derivative of time just a little bit higher than the integral. So, as you can see, we haven't even um, messed around with our rolls, our bread rolls, because you know it is the default setting of those general PIDs have kept it quite stable. So right now we're currently, you know. I don't know how we are flying, but you know, we're, we're sort of rotating around like idiots. Um, what I'm going to do is I think, let's see, how can we, 
How can we do this? Um, let's go into map. Listening. Um, let's give Control it away forward. a couple of waypoints. Moving, Moving out. And see how that Moving is out. going to behave. So it is following the path. So, you know, our turning, you know, is working properly. Now we are turning. Did we reach the end? No. So we're, we're sort of, yeah, we're not hitting our waypoint. So that's the reason why we're currently going around in circles. And then it got close enough. So that is telling me then we need to come into here, into our mainframe. Uh, I believe under maneuver. And this will be the order complete distance. We have to increase it because we couldn't get, you know, close enough to that waypoint. That is why we kept on circling it for, for quite a while. That is our turn ratio, unfortunately. So, you know, either adding more probably thrusters to, to our turns, or we can just increase this a little bit more. So let's take it up to 35, for example, and see how it does on the next one. If we have a next one, yes we do. We're about to hit it. Is it going to go around in circles like an absolute idiot, or... He just went past it. Okay. Well, that was strange. Uh, that that was strange. Um, perhaps I don't know. Perhaps that was the way the map or the map view was. But you know, it is pretty much going where we want it to go. I mean, obviously, fine tuning and all that is going to be needed on anything. We're just trying to get the basics sorted out. So that is our altitude. Uh, we are, you know, heading towards the waypoints that we want. Okay, so it looks like we've come to a standstill, which is very nice to see in From the Depths, because previously our hoverers would, you know, constantly try to circle. They would never stop in a place. So I am assuming that we hit our last waypoint. Yes, we did. So it's trying to circle around our last waypoint here. Okay, so... With that sorted out, I did end up adding just, you know, another two here just to see what's going to happen with the with two more thrusters on the front. So far, I haven't noticed anything different. But the next thing that I wanted to try out was, um, well, firstly putting our ship into combat mode. Taking control. And then spawning in a wild marauder. I'm telling said wild marauder not to shoot at us and see how exactly is this broadside going to actually work. Oh crap, that's, no I didn't want to add another one. So we have, I did change this a bit uh, just to see what's going to happen. So we have 600 as a minimum distance and maximum distance is 800 to stay at 90 degrees. So keeping that marauder 90 degrees, you know, on our right, which is. And it seems to be. So that's the distance currently that the marauder is away from us. I mean, we are definitely keeping it on our right-hand side, that is for sure. I mean, I think this sort of equals to orbiting the target, really. Currently, currently, that is what it's like. We are orbiting the target. So that is quite a nice addition. And, you know, we are stable at 300, which uh, uh, absolute perfect 300, which I could never get that to, you know, happen um, in previous patches. You know, previous previous versions. So let us just double check everything. So are your, we are okay. Um... I did crank this up probably a little bit too high, but like I said, you know, then you have to go back in and refine and further tweak things the way, you know, if you want it to be, you know, absolutely, utterly perfect, a lot of refinement is needed. This, I do not know, don't know why the forward back controller um, is saturated all the time, to be honest. That is 
something I'm going to have to look into. That has confused me quite a bit. Now, to be honest, let us see if I just remove these thrusters. What's going to happen? How is that going to affect? Now we are still saturated. So, I don't know. I don't know about this one, to be honest. Why, you know, we keep on popping, you know, back and forth onto a saturated point. But everything else is working perfectly. So that is pretty much how you do set up a thruster craft, you know, in the game. I think we do have a bit of over oversteer on on our uh, steering, pretty much. On our thrusters going left and, you know, pushing us left and right. So as you can see, we from 250, if we decrease this quite, you know, the amount. Uh, can I just get that there? Okay. We're, we're swerving more. We're swerving far more. Because it would be really nice if I, we could set up our broadside so it's, you know, perfectly still without the whole fishtailing, you know, back and forth. But as you can see, you know, just tweaking things slowly, we do get a difference. We can actually see that, you know, our changes are, are really causing a difference in the way our vehicle is moving. So when we try to keep it, as, we, as we're moving forwards and we're trying to keep this at a 90 degree, obviously we have to turn. And we're probably just turning a little bit too much. So it's trying to correct itself, coming back out again, and then it skips the point, so it's trying to correct itself again, and so on and so forth like that. I mean, perhaps if we just add in some more gain. So like I said, you know, these this is all fine tuning, you know, afterwards. So we're not going to be here for the whole fine tuning stuff. Okay, so I thought, let us try this whole strafe business. So I added on a couple of uh, thrusters on our sides and setting them up as pushes. Just to see how this is also going to affect things. If we check our distance. Wow, it is really keeping us close to that 700 mark, isn't it? And then obviously on the turning it's going to mess up a bit. And how does the PID look? So it does look like we are skipping somewhat onto the saturated point. So if we increase our integral time Just increase this a bit more as well. So that made it. That looks like it's made things worse. So yeah, and then we turn the whole thing off. We're no longer hitting that saturated, that saturated mark. I mean, all of this is new to me. I'm I'm doing this on the fly. I haven't messed around with this, you know, at all. Yeah, I mean, though that this is pretty much how you set up a basic thruster craft, really, and the PIDs with it. You have to have a bit of patience and just do things, in, increase things slowly, and you know, keep on trying. Uh, you know, until you start to smoothen things out, really. I mean, we are quite stable in the air. We're not fishtailing that much either or wobbling around the place. It looks like we do have a bit of strafe drive going on. I assume that we're circling here. Yeah. So if we uh, take door. that and you know, give Moving us out. some Moving waypoints. Out. And see how we are flying with the uh, strafe drives, you know, as well. You know, that's not that bad. I am really liking that. I am really liking that. It does look like we are a little bit on ice, like slipping around the place. So perhaps our strafe drives should have been more towards the edges where our, you know, our turners are.
and it slows down before it hits that waypoint and gains speed again after hitting that waypoint so yeah um i don't know what else to show really i mean there is one more thing that we could actually try there is uh, here we go the resource gathering behavior now to use this uh we obviously need a place to actually store the resources on can you just have you know a large storage um So obviously we added some weight on the back there it did tilt the nose up but we are correcting we've corrected pretty well you know decently there as well so we also would like to have um, some material gatherers now what we should see is our construct here heading towards that resource point once we turn on obviously gather resource so you have to turn that on and perhaps actually Taking remove control. the whole uh, waypoint thing So yeah, our storage is automatically getting filled up because we are in designer mode. So I'm going to have to probably add on some more by the time we get there. But as you can see, it's heading directly towards uh, that resource node with no issues, no fish tailing. It looks like we are strafing a little bit there. But there is no fish tailing, anything like that. Because previously, in previous versions, we used to get the wobbles, the fish tails and all of that used to always bug me that we couldn't have something, you know, just ride, you know, smoothly. However, then, you know, obviously it does come with the benefit. Erratic movement is you're going to be harder to hit. So our storage is already full because, you know, let's just get some of that. And this... And there we go. It is actually staying inside that resource node. That is just bloody awesome. I would love to see how this is actually going to work in the adventure mode. Because as you know, in the adventure mode, we get those resource nodes and just give it a, a whole go to the resource node thing. See how that works out. That's going to be quite, quite neat to check out. Looking forward for some adventure. So our vehicle is somewhat unbalanced. It looks like we are, our nose is a little bit high. But like I said, you know, these this is all fine tuning stuff that you can do later on. And as always, I choose the wrong thing. But at least we're not getting that saturated, you know, issue because that 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 does cause you problems once this keeps on the output keeps on popping on saturated on and off that will stop your vehicle from being stable or working as you you know as it should so whilst this construct makes us dizzy going round in circles i think i'm gonna call it here for this one i'm gonna get back to work on another <laughs> another another construct to get in our early game so hopefully you guys will carry on following me through our little adventure in the campaign mode of from the depths hopefully you guys will enjoy that and we you know we'll be making a couple of decent ships and, and engines and weapons and everything else that comes with it so hope you are all looking forward for that as much as i am so if you have managed to kill some time or this upload has helped you in any way please let me know in the box in the down there also remember to smash that like and subscribe button like they owe you money i'm gonna have to go and start to build a different uh cheaper starter vehicle <laughs> than this one uh how much is this costing me this is gonna cost this will be about 47 wow I don't think we can actually spawn this in in the start of the campaign, can we? 
Oh well, that is something for me to sort out. Hopefully this upload has helped you out in a little way, and um, yeah. I'm going to call it here for now. So, take care, and I will catch you all ouch, on the next one.